Dear participants, uh, let me introduce the second session of this conference, which is dedicated to a very important area, uh, correlated to audiation, and um, that is oral training possibilities in regard with new music demands. And we start uh, with a presentation by Marina Karasova with her paper, Bartok's Microcosmos as an ear training manual for the development of modern music thinking. Thank so, you. you're welcome. As we all know, the development of music thinking is a complex uh, process. Uh, it consists in the improvement of uh, the sense of music modes, forms, melodic and harmonic patterns, as well as uh, deepening of the music space and time perception in different music styles. The subject of ear training plays the important role in this process. Nowadays, uh, there is still a big problem for the music students how to assimilate the language of the 20th century music. In uh, this respect, uh, the Bartok's piano cycle in six part, uh, well known as microcosm or microcosmos, uh, uh, proves to be one of the best and unique means uh, of the contemporary leveled uh, ear training. Uh, in Russian, this solfeggio. Uh, here, I need to say that I'm an author of the Russian course of modern solfeggio in three parts. Uh, this cycle is methodologically important for ear training, uh, embraces almost all the principal elements of the 20th century harmony and rhythm. Uh, and it also provides the methodologically convenient possibility to accustom the music feeling to a non-classic composition, spe specifically to uh, paradoxical lo logic of music organization or maybe sometimes uh, psychological uh, role of uh, closed space and something else. Uh, so I use for many times Bartok's microcosmos on my ear training lessons in the Moscow Conservatory. And uh, the aim of my uh, today's speech is to present uh, the methodological analysis of main musical grammatical points in these Bartok cycles. Um, mixed uh, and symmetric modes, polymodal technique, non-symmetric rhythms, etc. To show their specific difficulties uh, and uh, the most effective ways uh, of their uh, overcoming. Uh, we also try to see video fragments of my lessons in contemporary ear training with my conservatory students, choral conductions, uh, and uh, Moscow Conservatory, uh, first and uh, second year of uh, education. Um, now all about it in detail. First, uh, why a piano cycle in solfeggio? Let us think about it. Uh, Bella Bartok's music is a rather often used material uh, which we can apply for many solfeggio aims. Solfeggio is an art of singing and uh, it is closely related to vocal music area. That's why the question can be used, uh, can we be used for non-vocal instrument music works uh, in solfeggio is uh, still on discussion. Singing of instrumental melodies, uh, which is a rule not matched with student voice register, demands additional time. Um, it's uh, home time uh, because it is a part of their home task uh, usually uh, to adjust it. Uh, by means uh, of sounds voice transfer to another octave, upper or lower, uh, they need to, uh, to do it. Uh, however, we know that singing in solfeggio lessons, uh, I mean uh, college level, uh, such instrumental works as Bach's uh, inventions and, or well-tempered clavier 
uh, proved uh, to be very effective tools for development of intonation and polyphonic ear for music. In this sense, uh, we can say that Bartok's microcosmos takes important place um, in modern solfeggio course and um, music conservatory of the higher, uh, higher level of music education, I think. Uh, and uh, now we, we begin in detail. Modal difficulties. Mm. The most effective way to uh, go synchronically um, in ear training format uh, with studying main theoretical themes such uh, as sound structures of uh, new post major or minor music language, um, mixed modes like uh, mixolydian, uh, mixolydian, etc. Uh, then uh, symmetrical modes, I mean uh, messian modes, and then uh, non-thought chords, uh, polyharmonical chords, polymodality, and irregular non-symmetrical rhymes uh, of uh, the 20th century music. Methodologically, it's very convenient for our academic process that Bartok, um, Bartok is if introduces the intonation uh, and rhythmic um, difficulties step by step in this cycle. It's very interesting. Um, so, uh, if we begin with the second part of uh, this cycle, the first one is uh, too easy. Um, it is, uh, I think, it's so for studying mixed modes um, mostly. Uh, uh, you can see it uh, here on the table. Um, then, in the third part, some components of uh, symmetrical uh, modes uh, are added. And the uh, fourth part, symmetrical modes became the main difficulty and uh, the fifth part is helpful to study chromatic melodic and closing broken chromatic lines like um, this uh, you can see it um, and uh, at last in the sixth part uh, there is uh, the most difficult uh, thing for intonation uh, I mean uh, for singing polytonal melodic lines at uh, a distance of uh, semitone. I mean, uh, a story about a little fly uh, later, <coughs> it will be about it. <coughs> so uh, let us continue with Bartok. Um, the beginning stage of studying <coughs> mixed modes, this is my, uh, sorry, this is um, my modus solfeggio, this contents um, for the uh, three parts is uh, synchronically uh, with teams. And um, at the beginning stage of, uh, stage of studying mixed modes and polymodality will start, will start with the 52 number uh, because it uh, is written in Lydian, mixolydian modes, as you see. Um, in uh, Number 50, the main difficulty is a changing scale, Lydian ionic scale. There are special uh, polymodal force relations as uh, typical for Bartok music. Student should sing steadily D and Ds in uh, one sound uh, vertical complex. Um, it is not easy, uh, especially because it is. Um, it may seem to them to their um, subconscious that it strictly cancels such type of harmony since uh, it is not clear in classical sense of harmony. Then additional difficulty for listening comprehension and uh, singing um, consists uh, in graphically hidden polymodality with uh, uh, each uh, very typical for uh, Bartok style in a whole. He often writes polymodal vertical constructions as the two independent uh, tonalities, uh, something it may be indicated by writing different, uh, different key signature for right and uh, left uh, hands, as you can see. Um, this is name a plane in two pentatonic scales. Um, I think it may be, no, okay. Uh, similar difficulties, um, let us name it as drone polytonality, are uh, in um, number 62, where two voices go in minus six. Uh, 
uh, and um, I think uh, as a rule, as, uh, in the beginning period of studying this piece, uh, students are trying to sing upper voice in Hamol and the low voice in uh, Gemol, uh, minor. Uh, such a approach, uh, it leads to the loss of feeling of tonality uh, center. And we cannot hear polytonally. It's not possible. Uh, physiologically, not possible. Uh, respectively, voice becomes uh, to be uh, in increasing ten tense. Uh, it is good to begin preliminary intonation exercise for uh, these piece with ear training on the bass uh, harmonic chord. Uh, I mean uh, six chord, uh, I mean uh, the second version of child, uh, with two thoughts uh, like uh, si, re, sol, si, bemol, um, major and minor. And um, students should um, feel a unified center D. As soon as um, ear training, uh, ear music, ear has been adapted to two thoughts uh, type of harmonic sound, thinking will be easy and clear. Uh, let's try to. <laughs> And uh, there are um, many examples such as uh, this one. But a story about little fly is the most complicated in this set of difficulties. Melodical lines are very close to each other on a uh, minor second. In um, order to uh, overcome these difficulties, students should fix their attention at special point of uh, ear control. It may be consonances or maybe even dissonances like semitones, uh, which is important in this process. Student must accept uh, a psychological presupposition that semitone uh, is a steady-like interval. This is like psychological. This is uh, the sheets. Uh, and uh, this uh, is it's very difficult to sing In symmetrical modes, um, I think it, uh, it is a lot uh, symmetrical modes, especially in a fourth part of Bartok cycle. And uh, several ear training exercises aimed at mastering symmetrical modes as well as other difficulties are important for their comprehension in uh, chords and uh, vertical and uh, horizontal uh, model scales projections. For instance, there is uh, uh, in S modes and R mode graphic design number, uh, design number, this is uh, like this, okay, um, in um, 101, and um, while collecting all sound from the two tetrahodes, we can see the mode tone, semitone, the same situation is in uh, number 101. Nine, as you see, as you can see, we can collect it, and then it will be um, tone semitone uh, scale. And um, whole tone scale is uh, here, and um, such work on symmetrical modes may be helping uh, not only to sing them clearly, but also to adapt feelings to. Um, Entrancement or 
charmed state produced by symmetrical modes. Such feelings might seem to be psychologically interesting and even attracting for the listener non-musicians. However, such state of mind is not very helpful for the professional music performers because they have to be uh, able to control this uh, ear technique. Okay. And um, the other difficulty is studying typical uh, chromatic melodic models by singing microcosmos. One of them, uh, narrow intervallic <coughs> melodic patterns like um, A, heart, C, C, B, us, for instance. One of the most often used in uh, the 20th century music. Um, there are <coughs> some numbers. Uh, 54, 64, uh, 79, uh, 80, 88, and then um, this number uh, you can uh, see, um, uh, which may help to learn this uh, melodic type. Uh, in this uh, piece, uh, this piece demands quick thinking for shifting on different variants of the zigzag scale. And one of the most difficult examples in this group is 91. This is chromatical invention. Um, and uh, we can try to... This choral conductors. shortly about some other difficulties. Graphical difficulties is microcosmos. It may be sheet notes written in complicated manner with strange connection of sharps and flat. Uh, uh, look at some examples. Uh, this is very strange. Um, there are uh, stretch key uh, signs. S in left hand and uh, versus fees and geese in right hand. That's not convenient uh, to play, not convenient to sing also. Um, and um, in uh, 60, uh, number 62, parallel augmented uh, fifth uh, in the middle section of this piece. It is just a rule uh, that this fragment will be sung as uh, parallel perfect um, sixth, not uh, minor uh, sixth. Uh, uh, fifth or not sixth. And uh, the best way to sing them without mistakes is to think about it uh, visually by imagination of a piano keyboard. Uh, and um, rhythmic difficulties in microcosmos. Among them uh, are polyrhythms with triplets, uh, quintuplets, non symmetrical times like. Um, five, uh, eight, uh, and so on. One of them, uh, this number, and uh, this is uh, quintuplus, uh, and uh, let's try. <laughs> So microcosmos pieces are usually performed by students as a part of their home task, um, also and they can sing one voice and play another one, or they can sing them by duet, maybe choral arrangement, uh, arrangements. Uh, and uh, during such a work, it will be useful to analyze the main difficulties, so to help students to perceive new stylish music, uh, new for them, of course, in um, order to accept uh, its rules um, by ear, not only theoretically, and uh, to feel uh, its beauty, uh, I hope so. Thank you for your attention.
Thank you. Any comments, questions? For what kind of students is it? The, well, for singers, for composers? Ah, uh, um, it is uh, choral conducting students, uh, the first grade and the second grade, uh, as uh, have seen, and uh, musicologist, uh, because um, as you maybe you know, uh, the piano player or string player, uh, they have no solfeggio classes in the conservatory um, because of too large course before the conservatory. Uh, that is. Uh, composers here, yeah, they, they have one year, yeah. Okay, but the, the, do you use this as, as a fundamental solfeggio or you use also the bicycle? Uh, I use uh, the course uh, named Modern Solfeggio, but it is not officially a uh, name, it's a solfeggio, just solfeggio, but uh, this is a uh, fixed, uh, fixed attention on uh, modern music. Um, not modern music, you know, yeah. classical music of the 20th century, of course, we can think about it. Um, but uh, as if it is necessary, of course, it's classical, it's polyphonical music, it may be clefs and maybe dictations, uh, all the um, usual uh, used uh, solfeggio forms of work. The Moscow Conservatory is... Thank you for a wonderful presentation. And I have a question regarding uh, your course, actually. It presents uh, a lot of difficulties in terms of uh, intervals, perfect intonation, and, and stuff like that. But contemporary music uh, throws us, at us a lot of different kind of tasks. And how about some rhythmic? Uh, yes, yes, sure. It, it, it doesn't. Um, mm. Let me see, maybe it was very fast. Here is rhythm, the special section. This is the contents of uh, the first part of my three parts course. Uh, this is um, rhythm, as you can see. This is um, polyrhythm, this is consyncopation, this is uh, rhythm in notation, uh, because it's a special great problem how to visually adapt uh, rhythms um, in sheet music and uh, mono-dimensional rhythm uh, like Messian's uh, rhythm is added value uh, ajouté, uh, I mean. Um, and special difficulties. This is complex, um, complex uh, course of solfeggio. It includes rhythms, uh, exercise. Um, the first uh, volume, the second volume is uh, the mu live mu music, not exercise, from the composer of 20th century music. And the uh, third part is harmonical solfege. This is for uh, you know, um, harmonical progression for hearing, for, for uh, writing dictation, uh, and uh, for singing, uh, choral, choral singing. Uh, uh, all this, uh, I think, uh, all this um, course, uh, it may be, uh, may, may, you may read may, the maybe great uh, library, uh, Library of Congress, uh, maybe. Moscow Conservatory too. <laughs> yes, it's strange, but but it is. Okay. Uh, yes, sure. Thank you. Any more questions? We have time a little bit. Thank you.